Last week, Teddy Bridgewater started at quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. And, uh, you know, the Saints won 33-27. to They beat the Seattle Seahawks. And while watching film for about three-fourths of this game, I was really unimpressed and, and just kind of bored watching Teddy Bridgewater. It took a long time before I finally saw the bigger picture of this game for him. At one point, I even wrote down on my notes, I said, you know, did Teddy Bridgewater win the game for the Saints or did the Saints win the game and Teddy Bridgewater just happened to be playing quarterback for them? Um, I watched this game and first of all, the Saints had a long touchdown on a punt. They also had a touchdown on defense. So I, I wondered, you know, when you look at Teddy Bridgewater's stats, you look at the picture on paper of what happened. He was 19 for 27 passing. That's a 70% completion percentage. He had 177 yards passing, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. But then you go, oh, wait a minute. Uh, his leading receiver was running back Alvin Kamara. <laughs> the running back caught nine of Bridgewater's 19 completions for 92 yards. And one of Teddy Bridgewater's touchdown passes came on a screen pass where he threw to Alvin Kamara, and Alvin Kamara basically did all the work and ran into the end zone. 29 yards. He broke some tackles. It was really impressive. And so when you look at things that way, it's really easy to be skeptical of Teddy Bridgewater. He threw short passes all day. And I'll be honest, I kept waiting and waiting and waiting for him to throw a big throw downfield and wow me, and it just never happened. The closest thing we got to Teddy Bridgewater making a big throw downfield was on a third and three. He threw a great back shoulder fade down the left sideline, and Jared Cook dropped it. It was a rail fade. He got wide down the left sideline. Great throw, incompletion. Jared Cook couldn't hang on. So what I'm left with is a performance that I feel really good about, even if I still have a couple questions left to be answered by Teddy. Now, the one time Teddy completed a pass farther downfield, Michael Thomas was wide open, and in fact, it really wasn't a great throw. It was really... A really tough catch. So I still have no idea how Teddy Bridgewater will do when he's forced to make big throws downfield into tight windows. I don't. Can he do that? No idea. I haven't seen it in a long... In, I don't think I've ever seen it. But what I did see from Teddy was really, really encouraging, and you can't take away from that. He made great decisions all game long. He consistently threw the ball into the right spot and, uh, you know, that's something you just can't take away from. You have to feel good about that. Wow. Teddy Bridgewater made great decisions. I want to discuss two plays. Uh, the first one is a third and five before halftime. The Saints went with five wide receivers. And for some reason, very stupidly, the Seattle Seahawks decided to play man coverage. <laughs> and what this did was create a very easy solution and uh, answer for Teddy Bridgewater. What should I do next? He threw a slant to Michael Thomas to convert for a first down. And I want to ask, why would you play Michael Thomas in man-to-man -man coverage on third and five with no help? I have, I have no idea why you would do that. Michael Thomas is not only the best receiver on the Saints, he's one of the best in the entire NFL. In fact, he's the highest paid receiver in the entire NFL. Teddy simplified the game. He said, oh, hey, I got a great matchup on the left. I'm going to throw the slant. The Saints get a first down, and later on that drive, they got a touchdown. Score one for Teddy. That's a great decision. Way to just do your job and put the ball in the right spot. The second decision is on a third and 13. And at first, when you watch this play, you literally go, so what? Why, why are you showing? You, you see Teddy Bridgewater throw a short, dinky pass on third and 13 and not get the first down, and you go, Zach, why are you showing me this? I don't care. <laughs> on third and 13, Teddy Bridgewater threw a dinky little pass for a nine-yard gain. Nothing special. It's not like the throw got the Saints the first down. But in a way, it did. Those nine yards mattered later in the game. Teddy Bridgewater was disciplined. He took what the defense gave him. He didn't force a throw downfield. And what that did is, first of all, it set up the Saints in a position to kick a 53-yard field goal. So even if even if that's all there was to the story, Teddy Bridgewater did a great job. He gained nine yards, put his team in a position to kick a field goal. Those nine yards mattered. But guess what really happened? On the field goal attempt, the Seahawks got a five-yard penalty. 
because it was fourth and four, that gave the Saints a whole new set of downs, a complete new down, first down Saints. If Teddy Bridgewater had forced a throw into a tight coverage and thrown an incomplete pass on third and 13, not only would the five-yard penalty have not mattered, they also would not have had a chance to kick a field goal. But that dinky little throw, that, you know, oh, Zach, he's throwing a, five, a nine-yard pass, who cares? What that did is led to a Saints first down and later a Saints touchdown. So yeah, I, I still have questions. I wonder if Teddy Bridgewater can complete passes in a tight window downfield. I haven't seen that. We'll find out in the coming weeks. But last Sunday, over and over and over again, Teddy put the ball in the right spot. There is something to be said for that, for making good decisions and moving the ball downfield. Teddy, he impressed me. He did. He made great decisions. I still have some questions. I don't know if he's the future successor yet to Drew Brees. I got to see more for that. But man, he played great on Sunday and left a really good encouraging feeling in my heart and I can't wait to watch him in the future. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is my podcast, Strong Opinion Sports. It is my favorite thing in the entire world. And you may not know, um, my dream when I graduate college eventually is to do this show as my full-time job. Uh, now, I also want to be very upfront and honest about my plan and what's going on. I recently monetized my YouTube channel. What that means is that some of my videos make money through ad revenue. Uh, now, it's fewer than you think. A lot of my videos get claimed. Um, but in the past, I've received donations through the form of PayPal and Patreon.com. PayPal.me forward slash Zach Schaumler. Patreon.com forward slash Zach Schaumler. So because I'm making ad revenue, it felt weird to just get donations. I wanted to give something back to the people who support me on Patreon. So now there's a reward. If you support me on Patreon, you can submit questions at the, at the dollar level or above. You just need to give a dollar a month. If you do that, you can submit questions to a pool of questions where I look at. I read all the questions on Patreon, and I pick the top couple every episode and read them and answer them on a, a segment called Ask Zach. I pick the top couple questions um, and answer them at the end of every single episode. Now, that's for people who want to support me with money. If you have no money to give, I totally understand. I've actually never supported anybody on Patreon. I feel kind of weird about that. I'm a broke college kid myself. I totally understand. Um, but if you believe in me and you, if you believe in my dream and still want to help me, one thing you can do is help me grow by telling your friends about Strong Opinion Sports. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is. Help me grow by telling your friends about Strong Opinion Sports. Guys, thank you so much. I know that was a long spiel. I really appreciate it, and uh, hope you have a great day.